Chapter 25 Daily Study of the Bible Necessary Those who are called of God to labor in word and doctrine should ever be learners. They should constantly seek to improve, that they may be ensamples to the flock of God and do good to all with whom they are brought in contact. Those who do not feel the importance of advancement and self-improvement will not grow in grace and in the knowledge of Christ. All heaven is interested in the work going on in this world, which is to prepare men and women for the future immortal life. It is God's plan that human agencies shall have the high honor of acting as co-workers with Jesus Christ in the salvation of souls. The Word of God plainly reveals that it is the privilege of the instrument in this great work to realize that there is one at his right hand ready to aid him in every sincere endeavor to reach the highest moral and spiritual excellence in the Master's work. This will be the case with all who feel their need of help. They should look upon the work of God as sacred and holy and should bring to him every day offerings of joy and gratitude in return for the power of his grace by which they are enabled to make advancement in the divine life. The worker should ever take humble views of himself, considering his many lost opportunities for want of diligence and appreciation of the work. He should not become discouraged, but should continually renew his efforts to redeem the time. Men whom God has chosen to be his ministers should prepare themselves for the work by thorough heart-searching and by close connection with the world's Redeemer. If they are not successful in winning souls to Christ, it is because their own souls are not right with God. There is altogether too much willing ignorance and a large number who are preaching the Word. They are not qualified for this work by a thorough understanding of the Scriptures. They do not feel the importance of the truth for this time. And therefore, the truth is not to them a living reality. If they would humble their souls before God, if they would walk according to the Scriptures in all humility of mind, then they would have more distinct views of the pattern which they should copy. But they fail to keep their eyes fixed upon the author and finisher of their faith. It is not necessary that anyone should yield to the temptations of Satan and thus violate his conscience and grieve the Holy Spirit. Every provision has been made in the Word of God whereby all may have divine help in their endeavors to overcome. If they keep Jesus before them, they will become changed into his image. All who by faith have Christ abiding in them carry a power into their labor which makes them successful. They will be constantly growing more and more efficient in their work, and the blessing of God shown in the prosperity of the work will testify that they are indeed laborers together with Christ. But however much one may advance in spiritual life, he will never come to a point where he will not need diligently to search the Scriptures for therein are found the evidences of our faith. All points of doctrine, even though they have been accepted as truth, should be brought to the law and to the testimony. If they cannot stand this test, there is no light in them. The great plan of redemption, as revealed in the closing work for these last days, should receive close examination. The scenes connected with the sanctuary above should make such an impression upon the minds and hearts of all that they may be able to impress others. All need to become more intelligent in regard to the work of the atonement which is going on in the sanctuary above. When this grand truth is seen and understood, those who hold it will work in harmony with Christ to prepare a people to stand in the great day of God and their efforts will be successful. By study, contemplation, and prayer,
God's people will be elevated among common earthly thoughts and feelings and will be brought into harmony with Christ at his great work of cleansing the sanctuary above from the sins of the people. Their faith will go with him into the sanctuary, and the worshipers on earth will be carefully reviewing their lives and comparing their characters with a great standard of righteousness. They will see their own defects. They will also see that they must have the aid of the Spirit of God if they would become qualified for the great and solemn work for this time which is laid upon God's ambassadors. Christ said, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. How many of those who are laboring in word and doctrine are eating Christ's flesh and drinking his blood? How many can comprehend this mystery? The Savior himself explains this matter. It is the Spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit, and they are life. The Word of God must be interwoven with the living character of those who believe it. The only vital faith is that faith which receives and assimilates the truth till it is a part of the being and the motive power of the life and action. Jesus is called the Word of God. He accepted his Father's law, wrought out its principles in his life, manifested its spirit, and showed its beneficent power in the heart. Says John, the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The followers of Christ must be partakers of his experience. They must assimilate the word of God. They must be changed into its likeness by the power of Christ and reflect the divine attributes. They must eat the flesh and drink the blood of the Son of God, or there is no life in them. The spirit and work of Christ must become the spirit and work of his disciples. It is not enough to preach the truth. It must be carried out in the life. Christ must be abiding in us and we in him in order to do the work of God. Each must have an individual experience and put forth personal efforts to reach souls. God requires each to put all his powers into the work and through continual effort educate himself to do the work acceptably. He expects everyone to bring the grace of Christ into his heart, that he may be a bright and shining light to the world. If God's workers train all their powers thoroughly, then they may work understandingly, in all wisdom, and God will surely respond to their efforts to uplift, refine, and save their fellow men. All the workers must use tact, and bring their faculties under the controlling influence of the Spirit of God. They must make it a business to study His Word and hear God's voice addressing them from His living oracles in reproof, in restruction, or in encouragement, and His Spirit will strengthen them that they may, as God's workers, advance in religious experience. Thus they will be led on step by step to greater heights, and their joy will be full. While engaging in the work that God has given them to do, they will find no time and have no disposition to glorify themselves. Neither will they find time to murmur or complain, for their affections are centered on things above, not on earthly things. Heart, 
soul and body will then be enlisted in the work of the Master. They will not labor selfishly, but will deny themselves for Christ's sake. They will lift his cross, for they are his true disciples. They will feed day by day upon the precious truths of God's word and will thus be strengthened for duty and braced for trial. In this way, they will become strong, well-developed men and women in Christ. They will then be true sons and daughters of the heavenly King. The greatness of the truth which they love and contemplate will expand the mind, strengthen the judgment, and elevate the character. They will not be novices in the great work of saving souls, for they are working with the wisdom given them of God. Neither will they be dwarfs in religious life, but will grow up in Christ, their living head, to the full stature of men and women in Christ Jesus. The conflicts with the enemies of truth will then only strengthen their hopes and they will have precious victories because they call to their aid the mighty helper who never disappoints the humble seeker. If their efforts are successful, all the glory will be given to God. Heaven will come very near to them in sympathy and cooperation. They are made indeed a spectacle to the world, to angels and to men. They are marked characters because of their purity of heart and life their strength of purpose, their firmness and usefulness in the cause of God. They are God's noblemen. In the religious life of every soul who is finally victorious, there will be scenes of terrible perplexity and trial. But his knowledge of the scriptures will enable him to bring his mind the encouraging promises of God, which will comfort his heart and strengthen his faith in the power of the Mighty One. He reads, Cast not away therefore your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen ye love, in whom, though now you see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. The trial of faith, more precious than gold. All should learn that this is a part of the discipline in the school of Christ, which is essential to purify and refine them from the dross of earthliness. They must endure with fortitude the taunts and attacks of the enemies and overcome all obstacles that Satan may place in their path to hedge up the way. He will try to lead them to neglect prayer and to discourage them in the study of the scriptures. And he will throw his hateful shadow athwart their path to hide Christ and the heavenly attractions from their view. None should go along shrinking and trembling, under continual doubt, sowing their path with complainings. But all should look up to God and see His goodness and rejoice in His love. Summon all your powers to look up, not down at your difficulties. Then you will never faint by the way. You will soon see Jesus behind the cloud, reaching out His hand to help you. And all you have to do is to give him your hand in simple faith and let him lead you. As you become trustful, you will, through faith in Jesus, become hopeful. The light shining from the cross of Calvary will reveal to you God's estimate of the soul. And appreciating that estimate, you will seek to reflect the light to the world. A great name among men is as letters traced in the sand, but a spotless character will endure to all eternity. God gives you intelligence and a reasoning mind whereby you may grasp his promises, and Jesus is ready to help you in forming a strong symmetrical character. Those 
who possess such a character need never become discouraged because they have not success in worldly affairs. They are the light of the world. Satan cannot destroy or make of none effect the light that shines forth from them. God has a work for us to do, for each one. It is no part of his plan that souls shall be sustained in the battle of life by human sympathy and praise, but he means that they shall go without the camp, bearing the reproach, fighting the good fight of faith, and standing in his strength under every difficulty. God has opened to us all the treasures of heaven through the precious gift of his Son, who is fully able to uplift, ennoble, and fit us through his perfection of character for usefulness in this life and for a holy heaven. He came to our world and lived as he requires his followers to live. His was a life of self-denial and constant self-sacrifice. If we encourage selfishness and ease and the gratification of inclination and do not put forth our best efforts to cooperate with God in the wonderful work of elevating, ennobling, and purifying us, that we may become sons and daughters of God, then we do not meet his requirements. We sustain a continual loss in this life, and we shall eventually lose the future immortal life. God wants you to work, not with self-disparagement nor in discouragement, but with the strongest faith and hope, with cheerfulness and joy representing Christ to the world. The religion of Jesus is joy, peace, and happiness. As we search the scriptures, we see the infinite condescension of the Father in giving Jesus to the world that all who believe in him may have everlasting life. Every power of our being should be called into activity to give praise and honor and glory to him for his unspeakable love to the children of men.